Good morning, my friends. Yesterday I had an amazing experience. I attended the Lunch with the Leader organized by the Bedrosian Governance Center of Price at USC and had the honor of having a discussion, a group discussion, with a council member, Marquis Harris Dawson of the city of LA. It was an amazing experience. Council member uh, Harris Dawson is an exceptional person, is a charismatic leader. He was very kind, very open to all, with all the participants. The relationship in the, in the personal contact was very smooth. I even had the chance to take a picture with him that you will see at the beginning of this video. So for starters, it was a great introduction, great lunch, very, very, very grateful with uh, the Bedrosian Center with the, for the invitation and congratulations. You pulled out a magnificent event and uh, I hope you, I can attend many more of these. When we started, uh, Council Member Harris made a brief introduction and uh, among the many challenges and difficulties uh, the city of LA faces, he started with one and from there he developed other, uh, other topics. I'm not going to cover all the topics, it will take too long, but I'll give you my impressions of how he managed to link one issue with the other and gave uh, a very significant view of the city as he understands it. And he personally, he changed the perspective from which I look at the city of LA at today. It's different today than it was yesterday. Uh, he said the main problem is housing. And he said that the city has three options or go backwards, or stay where they are, or move forward. Obviously, the solution is to move forward, to make changes. He says that, um, for some reason, the city of LA mimicked the policy, regulations, and model of the housing in Irvine, California. And Irvine is an over-regulated city. They have a lot of regulations on the altitude of the buildings, the concentration of housing. They have limited areas for commerce, limited areas for industry, and changes to this uh, legislation are very, very difficult. Somehow, LA tried to mimic this model, and it failed. Today, Los Angeles is an 8 million people population city. And this is only the city of LA. The county is much larger. The city of LA has 8 million people living here. And LA has become the first destination for millennials. And today in the United States, we have more millennials than baby boomers. So every year we have a lot of migration, not only international that we do, but domestic within the state and within the country. Millennials want to come to LA. And if we consider the needs of the city in housing to cover all these needs, we would need 40,000 new houses every year just to cover the demand. And guess what? We only build 5,000. So that leads us to another situation that is very complex, homeless. We have 50,000 homeless people in the city and we need to provide them with a solution urgently. This is a very serious public policy issue. But he mentioned something that I found very interesting. People that vote generally are homeowners, mortgage payers. People that rent or move generally don't vote as much. So constituents are the homeowners. And if the city goes into a policy of expanding housing, the value of the housing of the constituents will decrease. So these constituents will not be very supportive of this action. So there is a political thing going on. But obviously he mentioned, once you're elected a council member or a mayor, you are responsible to provide policy and solutions to all the population, not just to your constituents. And that is true. So this is a conundrum. The LA has to work itself out of this. Also, uh, the housing problem uh, leads to the to the homeless and we have a problem with shelters the city does not provide shelters there's there are not shelters from the city uh, other cities like New York do have shelters but not LA why because in New York in the winter if you don't have a shelter you die in LA if you don't have a shelter you don't die so it's not a priority and, the, and he made it very clear 
There are other shelters that are run by organizations, religious organizations, education organizations, but they are not easy because they have barriers. They have barriers to accept the people to come for by, because of the gender, their sexual preferences. So uh, it's not a complete solution and it needs to be worked on. So this is just um, a little example of how one thing like, like housing can develop a huge set of topics and issues for the city. Also, he mentioned the difficulties of the transportation system. He mentioned that uh, today we have 8 million people living in the city of LA and the metro system only uh, is designed for 1 million, so we have a huge deficit. However, he also mentioned that a lot of work is being done by the Metro Transportation Administration and that uh, they are catching up with the deficit. But it will take some years. 7 million people deficit, it's a lot of people. So this was very interesting. I learned a lot. Yes, uh, he all also spoke about uh, art, about um, outdoors museums, other, uh, other, other issues that are very significant uh, to the city, to the black culture, and, and it was very interesting. I learned a lot of things. Two or three final remarks. He uh, mentioned that uh, LA is a city that is mainly run by the council, not the mayor. It's run by the council. So it's very important to have this in mind. Many times you think is the mayor not doing things, but he cannot do them. He has to go to the council. So that is very important to understand. And I didn't know that. I learned a lot. I repeat this all the time, but it's true. I learned a lot yesterday. And uh, the other thing is that the city, which is huge, is run by very few people. So it's hard to coordinate uh, things getting done. He didn't say it, but he implied that probably a more decentralized and more the negative uh, structure of, of the city will be better to get things done faster. Because many times, if you need to talk to the head of an area, it's not easy to get him, and there are many, very few decision makers. So you have to move this decision power maybe one or two levels lower to, to make it more efficient for, for the city. And the other thing uh, that he mentioned is that, uh, that the healthcare policy for LA is run by LA County, not the city of LA. So I, I myself made a question about other solutions for crowded and large cities uh, to provide public health care in, La in Latin America, like Mexico City, like uh, Lima in Peru, which are very large cities. And he said, well, that the city of LA is not involved in, the, in public health care, but however, that the model that the city has run by, the, by the LA County um, it's from uh, copied from Cuba. That was surprising. I was amazed to hear that. It was copied from Cuba and it consists in having uh, medical centers in neighborhoods to provide uh, closeness for, for the patient. The patient, due to traffic limitations and uh, geographic barriers, uh, could easily access these centers that are in, in their neighborhood. So as you see, it was a very interesting, very full of new insights, new visions, and uh, uh, opportunity. And the lunch was delicious. Congratulations to the Bedrosian Center. It was amazing. You pulled out a magnificent event. I was very, very satisfied. And I promise I will be attending as many events as possible. Usually when I attend one of these events, I make a video like this one. And I publish it in YouTube. If you liked it, please press subscribe button in YouTube and you can be notified about my future uh, videos and you can enjoy, if you like this one, uh, the new insights that the great content the University of Southern California is providing us through these kind of events. Thank you very much to the Bedrosian Center again, thank you to the University of uh, Southern California and thank you to you, for to all of you for uh, looking at this video and remember if you liked it don't forget subscribe to the video. Hope to see you soon and I will be attending other events very shortly. Thank you so much.